In the early 1990s, director James Cameron convinced Carol Co. Pictures, which produced movies such as Terminator 2, Total Recall, and Rambo, to option the film rights to Spider-Man. But Cameron's production was ultimately tangled in an inescapable web. Why couldn't one of Hollywood's most powerful directors get this film made? Oh no. No! Ah! Too edgy. Cameron's plans for Spider-Man have become a Hollywood legend. According to Rebecca Keegan's book, The Futurist, The Life and Films of James Cameron, Spidey creator Stan Lee absolutely loved Cameron's treatment. Ultimately, many of Cameron's own ideas, like Spidey's organic web shooters and Uncle Ben's carjacking death, made it into the Sam Raimi-directed Spider-Man movie from 2002. But for every one of Cameron's good ideas, there were at least three that were not. Cameron called for Peter to curse like a sailor, which would have resulted in an R rating. And then there was a scene where Peter peeped in Mary Jane's window as she dressed, and one where Spidey and MJ get intimate on the Brooklyn Bridge while Peter describes the creepy ways spiders mate. Uh, what? <laughs> Low budget. Cameron would have likely made Spider-Man right after Terminator 2, which had a $100 million budget. According to Janet Wasco's How Hollywood Works, Carol Coe only committed to a $50 million budget, a huge step backwards for him. And if the reported budgets of his next two films, $100 million for True Lies and a record-setting $200 million for Titanic tell us anything, it's that Spidey's balance sheet wasn't going to fly. Bad casting. Rumor has it that Cameron wanted to cast Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dr. Octopus. Schwarzenegger even hinted at his involvement in an interview with Empire, only going so far as to vaguely say that the studio went in another direction. There are yet more rumors and reports of Cameron's dream cast for the film, and one of them is a pretty strange choice. Edward Furlong, whose big break came as John Connor in Cameron's Terminator 2, was reportedly the director's pick for Peter Parker, and Leonardo DiCaprio was to play Harry Osborn. Of course, Leo wouldn't play second fiddle to just anyone. Johnny Depp, sure. Eddie Furlong, not a chance. The report also pegs Drew Barrymore as Gwen Stacy, and J. Jonah Jameson would have been played by R. Lee Ermey, the drill sergeant in Full Metal Jacket. You will not laugh! You will not cry! You will learn by the numbers! I will teach you! That would have been perfect, but it wouldn't have been enough to make up for tanking the principal cast. Litigation While the script, casting, and budget issues all could have become later stumbling blocks, what ultimately squashed Cameron Spider-Man were legal issues. Cameron told Collider that when Carol Coe collapsed a few years after they acquired the rights to Spider-Man, he already had Titanic in his sights. Moreover, he no longer wanted to pursue Spider-Man because of all the competing interests for the rights amid Carol Coe's bankruptcy and Marvel's. Apparently, a number of former writers and producers all claimed to have had a hand in developing the project, and they all came calling. Marvel's own 1996 bankruptcy process scattered multiple holding deals to the wind. According to How Hollywood Works, after Marvel recovered from bankruptcy, they basically paid off everyone who was trying to sue for the rights to Spider-Man, which freed them up to sell the rights to Sony. Meanwhile, Cameron turned one of the greatest human tragedies of all time into a billion-dollar smash, so he did just fine. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to let us know who should have starred in James Cameron's Spider-Man movie.